Could the cruel truth be that it was not now Arthur for a very good reason? Back to Frank Ifield for musical reassurance. Well, he obviously learnt my part pretty well. Mind you, there was only about three or four notes in my bit. And he played that pretty well, so I had nothing to complain about. Just before I had, I remember you, incidentally, and before I did this show with Arthur, um, I was working with a guy called Bruce Chanel. He had a song called um, Hey Baby. Hey Baby, yeah. A great song, I really liked it, it had a raw sound to it. And part of that raw sound was in fact the mouth organ and a guy by the name of uh, Delbert McClinton. And that's why I had it in I Remember You. And it was a little bit later on when in fact uh, I found the Beatles were also influenced by him and that's why they used the harmonica as well. In a way then, Arthur was riding the wave of a harmonica revival. It seemed odd then that Arthur never released a record of his own. Anne Hamilton. He had planned to do a Not Now Arthur special Christmas record because of the time he'd been in the show and Not Now Arthur had become a catchphrase for the whole country and everybody associated it with Arthur Tulcher. He thought this was a jolly good time. But what happened was Arthur Mullard put a Not Now Arthur uh, Christmas song out and therefore took the market. Not now Arthur, Arthur, Lily had. One of the great memories of the Morecambe and Wise television shows of the BBC from 69 to 77 was the big musical numbers. These were staged and directed by the person I'm going to talk to now, Ernest Maxson. Before he did anything, he commanded the stage. He commanded the screen. Suddenly, your eye went right to his point. I w if I had used Arthur, I wouldn't have used him in a... A short way, you know, get out of that or get off quickly. I would have used him much more, probably as a friend of theirs that lives next door that comes in or something like that. Well, I wonder what can be keeping that notorious outlaw Dick Turpin. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure he'll be here soon, Flossie. Well, he sure enough, one of the plays, What Ernie Wrote, The Legend of Dick Turpin, presented Arthur exactly thus. Maybe I can amuse you while you're waiting. How'd you do that without moving your legs? <laughs> it's the Bow Street Runner! You're a fine actor, Arthur. There he is, the six dollar man. <laughs> when it comes down to it, it was, it was kind of symbolic of any variety specialist artiste that it was a case of not now Arthur and they were just desperate for their little moment and it was being denied. There may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight and music and love... But the Morecambe and Wise show became a hungry beast. It was so much the flagship of the BBC's schedules that the pressure for more original, sophisticated material was intense. The musical numbers became more and more lavish and eventually Ernest Maxson had to think the unthinkable. When you bring a person on the screen to get the same kind of laugh out of him week after week, it's not that person's fault that it doesn't work. And I think the right thing happened for Arthur. I, I can't remember what happened to him after, but it finished at his peak. There was only one way to go. D did you have to break the news to Arthur? Or, or, or did Eric, in terms of, right, they, you know, this no. has run its course, it's been incredibly successful. No. Eric and Ernie's agent no. told Arthur's agent. I think it went that way. I wouldn't like to have had that job because I like Arthur Tulcher and he's a, he was a very good performer. He definitely became a mini-celebrity. He was recognised, he was known, and hopefully he did get other work from that. But, yeah. but no, he just loved it, and he was heartbroken when, when Eric died, and I think he was heartbroken when it came to an end. We used to meet in the tea rooms at um, Birmingham to get the other little train to Blockswitch. And uh, I met him this day, and we'd got this cup of tea and what have you and then all of a sudden 
he burst into tears. And I looked to see where he was look, where he, you know, because he seemed to look that way. Someone was reading the newspaper and it said Eric Malcolm had died. I managed in the end to get him to get the little train and we went home and he was very upset all the way, you know. Arthur Tolcher died in March 1987, just three years after the nation mourned the death of Eric Morecambe. Only one paper carried Arthur's obituary, the Wolverhampton Express and Star. Not now TV man Arthur dies, age 63. They even got his age wrong. After the funeral, we went back to Arthur's house and there was just a little cardboard box there and it just said, uh, this is for Roy. And it was all photographs and things and then at the bottom of it, his life story, which was terrific to have. There's a bit here where he got his first, first mouth organ. When the stage did manifest itself as a job for me, it came in the most unusual form that even my ambitious parents had never anticipated, and all because of the humble little bandmaster vamper mouth organ. I received a letter from the BBC asking if I were indeed the same Arthur Tolcher who Eric and Ernie had known since they were kids, and if so, did I still play, as they had a little scene in mind for a coming brawl. The only thing being is that at the time of writing this, I have so far found that no woman willing to take to me well enough to spend the life of a journeyman theatrical, have makeup, will travel, and live for long spells out of a suitcase. All in all, it's been an interesting life, to say the least even if it has been not now, Arthur. Do you miss him? Very much. I really do, yeah. Yeah, I really do. Because, as I say, he used to phone me up about everything. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I really do. The repetitious motto of the catchphrase is that which recognises, encapsulates and even expands a character in our mind's eye. As a performer, Arthur Tolcher was more than the comic cowbell he carried for the latter part of his life. And if there is a hippodrome heaven, a palladium paradise, a variety Valhalla, where the dressing rooms are all the same size, I'd like to think that's where Arthur is now. But with all things being equal, up there, he's finally top of the bill. A case of now, Arthur. We've got some spare time. The show's a little early. We've got a couple of minutes spare. What should we do? Arthur! Hey, Arthur! Arthur! Yes? Come on! Down? Yeah, yeah we've got a couple of minutes spare. You can do the whole number. Hurry up. Oh, lovely. Great. Oh, oh, oh. Right. <laughs> Just blow a bit harder, do you feel? Hey, boys. Come on. I've left the harmonica in the dressing room. Oh, go and fetch it, Arthur. Oh. What about? Get back. <laughs> cool. Hurry what are you up. What going to do with it? I don't know. Have you got it? Have you got yes, it? Come yes. on, come on. Here we are. He's dressed very close. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we've run out of time. Not Now Arthur was presented by Stuart Henderson and produced by Eleanor Thomas.